Today in Infinity Kingdom, I'm going to be bringing you my complete guide to the great wizard himself, Merlin. What's going on guys? Cheers. We got some coffee today. It's 4 p.m., but that's okay. It's never too late. So this video is long overdue. Merlin is my favorite immortal here in Infinity Kingdom. He is so versatile and super powerful, especially because you can get him pretty quickly once you start playing the game. So today we're going to cover everything. We're going to cover ways that you can obtain a Merlin. We're going to talk about sort of the skill progression, right? So what skills should you be investing in him early game versus mid game versus late game? And then we're also going to be talking about which immortals should you be pairing with Merlin so that way you can get the most value out of him and that way you can dominate on the battlefield a little bit later in the video I'm also going to show you a combo that you can do with the water dragon that is sort of well known for those of you who've been playing for a while but if you're brand new to infinity kingdom it's going to help you out a ton for those battles where you're not forced to auto battle and you can actually control the flow so make sure you stay tuned until then but guys if you haven't tried infinity kingdom yet there is a link in the description below to download infinity kingdom it's free to play I'm loving the game I'm playing in server 21. I recommend that you guys start in a brand new server and then migrate to my server if you do want to play with me. And of course, if you love Infinity Kingdom content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell. Okay, so back to Merlin. How do you obtain Merlin? Well, everybody sort of knows, and this is pretty apparent when you first start the game, right? That Merlin is initially obtained by making a recharge purchase. Now, you also can get him as a VIP uh, bundle, I believe, if you want to just directly buy him. So yeah, it looks like VIP 2, you can get him. Uh, uh, VIP three, he's still there as well. VIP four, he's still there, which is great. And then also again, VIP one, I'm pretty sure this is, uh, you know, the first thing, oh, I didn't buy the VIP zero chest. I guess that doesn't really matter too much, but afterwards though, you're not forced to buy those VIP bundles because he will show up periodically in the market with your free market refreshes. You do have a decent chance of getting him as immortal fragments, which is nice. Definitely a higher probability than, you know, somebody like Genghis Khan, for example, or William, or even Ramses or Peter the great right so i love that you're not forced to continue to buy him right in other games there are immortals or commanders or characters where you can only get them by spending money which is really frustrating so in this game you spend just a few dollars you get him and then you don't have to spend 200 300 just to complete them which is really really nice okay now let's talk about what exactly merlin is doing okay because a lot of these immortals have different roles in the game obviously you have four immortals in a army right in a particular troop configuration so merlin is is a water immortal if you haven't picked that up already he's literally floating on water here uh, he is a bowman in your back row and he does magical damage right so we can take a look here at his stats um, he's got sort of below average strength right it's pretty weak strength not gonna lie uh, his agility is okay his crit chance is high his intelligence is where he shines right so he's very good at resisting magical attacks and he's dealing a ton of magical damage and that's what is absolutely amazing about Merlin and kind of gives him some versatility to where yes you do want him in a water team but late 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 game if you need him to fill in in like a third troop or fourth troop uh, March right you can sort of use him uh, as a fill-in for the back row let's take a look at his uh energy skill right his energy skill called prophecy it says deals magical damage with a damage rate of 520 percent to all enemies if the target has been chilled this damage is increased by 50 percent so this is an absolute nuke right this is an absolute nuke if you take a look at other epic immortals for example we're going to go down here uh, and we're going to take a look at himiko right she is a, a bit of a newer immortal and she is considered you know a little bit more powerful because she is uh, the shadow shadow element right um, if you take a look at her, she is dealing 450% magical damage at her max. So even comparing uh, Merlin, which you can get right at the beginning of the game to somebody like Himiko, which you actually, you know, you have to spin the wheel a ton to get her. And I still only have her at three points here. He's still dealing more damage, just raw damage than her, which is crazy. So what we want to do with the rest of his skills is capitalize on that, right? He's going to be dealing tons of nuke damage with that skill. And so we want to do a few things. One, we want to make sure that that his um, energy regen is really high his attack speed is high because that's how you regenerate that energy and you also want to be just giving him ways to deal magical damage so if we take a look in the tower of knowledge there's a couple of clear winners when it comes to which ones should you be picking for Merlin so in the early game you're gonna see that you know below level 20 you really don't have that many options right because you only get new skills every 
five uh, levels of your tower of, tower of knowledge so in the early game it's going to be pretty difficult to get some of the uh the late game uh skills which is fine you have a lot to worry about in the early game you're going to be spending a lot of your soul crystals on you know just getting immortals from the market right so that's something you're going to be spending a lot of crystals on so with your excess there's going to be a few things here that i think are worth investing in first um is wisdom this is just like the starter skill and you obviously want to give this to merlin um helen of troy is another good choice here but merlin just deals more damage so you want to just you just give it to him just min max on that magical attack uh and this is going to be really nice here so you can see um getting it to at least level four is important because it get, puts you above that 30 percent mark and that's kind of where i feel like it, it's impactful right 36 percent is nice but all the way up to 60 percent magical attack great for a beginner early game skill next i would recommend meteor meteor says after every six seconds there's a 55 percent chance of causing magical damage to one random enemy unit which is really nice so this goes up to 350 percent very very nice stuff here this is just a cheap early game way of just dealing random amounts of large damage to a single target which is nice so pushing from the early game to the mid game you're gonna get uh concentration which is a decent skill I've seen some higher end players use this. I've also seen players uh, remove this from their Merlin and use it on their second or third March in favor of other skills that we're going to be talking about. Concentration is sort of like a, an enhanced version from what I can tell of wisdom, right? This is magical attack. This is just all magical damage, right? Upwards of 30%, which is really, really nice, right? Um, the good thing about investing in, in concentration is that you can just move this from Merlin to somebody else that does magical damage later on the line so investing in concentration isn't uh, isn't that bad of an investment and again you can use this mid to late game as well but eventually you're going to probably replace this with a few other things now two clear choices from what i can tell and what a lot of other players are using are toxin toxin nova and fire nova both of these basically do the same thing which is awesome because that means you can put both of them on the same immortal both of them on merlin uh to just really capitalize on that magical damage so as you can see here uh, with fire nova and you get these at level 29 and 30 right so fire nova says every second sec six seconds after battle starts you have a 50 percent chance of causing magical damage of upwards of 175 percent to three random enemy units and also inflicting burn for six seconds dealing magical damage to the targets once every three seconds with a max of 75 percent so this is another aoe magical damage for Merlin on top of his already mega powerful um, energy skill, which is insanely good. And then if you look at Toxin Nova, it's literally the exact same thing, except with poison damage over time instead of fire damage over time. So again, these are very, very similar skills, very powerful for Merlin, capitalizing on just dealing even more AOE magical damage. It's insane. Uh, and then finally for that uh, mid game, something that you could consider also is Heavenly Thunder. Um, I haven't seen this used as much, with Merlin um but if you really have a high attack speed for Merlin I think that this is underrated it, it could be underrated right because every normal attack has a 30 percent chance now I know 30 percent obviously is lower than the 50 percent chance here but this is every six seconds whereas this is every normal attack so the the chances of it triggering are more and more and there's no sign of a cooldown here saying like you can you can only use it once every five seconds or once every 10 seconds whatever the case is so it's really interesting to see that not not that many players are using this but i feel like because of how many normal attacks you're doing it may compete with fire and toxin nova right now i'm not using it i haven't invested in it but it, you know if you guys are using it let me know in the comments how this is going for you now pushing into late game i'm gonna make a few suggestions but i want to you know have one quick disclaimer here obviously i am not max level tower of knowledge so i haven't tested a lot of these uh, a lot of these skills so take this with, with a grain of salt but these are things that i've seen other players use and things that to me make sense logically but obviously they would have to be tested so you can see late game level 34 tower of knowledge i went ahead and grabbed rage blessing this literally just increases the energy regen speed of three random uh, units by upwards of 50 percent for the first 12 seconds of battle so ideally you want this to affect your merlin but it is random so that's kind of the downside right but more times than not this is going to affect your merlin which is really nice and the reason that this is so good with merlin is because if this does affect him um you're gonna be able to pump out that that primary uh, skill right that energy skill 
more often in those first 12 seconds that first nuke is going to happen much faster which is super important again you want to maximize the amount of times that that is going off so rage blessing definitely something to consider in the uh sort of mid to late game and and late game as well we also can talk about berserk this is the first epic skill that i'm going to be talking about here um this is straight up attack speed for merlin which inevitably also will increase his energy regen right because the more you're hitting the enemy the more you're regenerating your energy which is really really nice um so really you're doing it for the attack speed but also uh, you're restoring your hp as well uh, which is really nice so this is something to consider i haven't made the deep dive into this yet because this is a huge investment but i think that it could work really well with Merlin so something to consider there we also can take a look at something like speed blessing pretty much for the same reason right this gives you up to 30 percent increase in attack speed which is really nice for Merlin so again this is only an elite you could try this as well I haven't gotten to 36 yet so I haven't been able to give it a try but I think that this could be really incredible and then finally annihilation just seems super powerful right this is going to be a really big investment but every six seconds you have a 45 percent chance to do a 300 damage rate uh, nuke to all enemy units that's crazy love to see this this is something you know level 37 it's it's an epic skill so it's really expensive but i think that this would be insanely good on merlin now obviously we're talking about the water dragon when it comes to best dragons for merlin uh my favorite thing is that this second dragon skill ice breath has a chance of freezing three random enemy troops so they cannot move or recover energy for eight seconds so they're basically stuck in place and afterwards i like to hit them with merlin's primary skill uh his energy skill where he does a massive nuke and the reason for that is because during that time uh the enemy can't do any sort of buffing or debuffing or anything like that if they're frozen they're frozen they can't do anything to sort of stop merlin from dealing that massive nuke to the enemy team now of course you know this only has a 30 percent chance so there is the chance that when you use this it doesn't do anything right maybe that none of them get frozen it is what it is also this third skill on the water dragon makes it so that way it's usually best to use merlin's skill last because every time you use a skill on your other water immortals and they inflict skill damage all your water immortals get plus upwards of three percent damage increase which stacks up to five times so basically you want to use all your other water immortal skills to boost those stacks for merlin and then use his uh his energy skill to just deal a ton of damage all right so let's go ahead and finally take a look at which immortals you should be pairing with merlin right at the beginning of the game this is the immortal composition you're going to be stuck with for a little bit until you can replace pierre and lancelot uh helen of troy if you start in a new server or even if you just open up a bunch of the philosopher's stone summons uh, you're gonna get her right she's good she's very powerful even it's a mid game paired with Merlin and the reason for that is because her energy skill conjures an ice storm which has a chance of chilling the enemy which means if you're pairing Helen of Troy with Merlin you want to use her skill first and then you want to use Merlin's skill after because again there's a chance she chills them and if they're chilled Merlin's energy skill here is going to deal 50% more damage which is insane that combination is incredible so this is going to be a great back row for a long time now your front row is going to be Pierre and Lancelot these are the you want to get rid of them as soon as possible right uh, the reason Pierre is in front of Helen is because Merlin is more important than Helen and so you want Lancelot in front of Merlin to sort of protect him a little bit better than Pierre moving into the mid game we're going to put Brynhild here instead of Pierre uh Brynhild is just dealing more damage she's more tanky she's obviously a little bit more rare so she's definitely a better choice and then in this instance you're going to swap these two so Brynhild is protecting Merlin you also then want to go ahead and pick up Harold Harold is going to be your front row and once you get him you're going to swap him over here so you're going to have your epics in one row your uh, elites in the other row and this is going to give you a pretty nice tanky front row for your back row which is just dealing tons of magical damage which is super important and that's what this uh this kind of composition is good for now the cool thing about Harold is that even though he is an epic immortal you can get him for free just by doing the philosopher stone summons you're also going to be able to get him in in the first season 
of the arena just by playing the arena so you can get a ton of this uh these fragments just by you know free to play playing you're gonna get him even though he's a little bit rarer so if merlin is the only purchase you're gonna be making in infinity kingdom then this is pretty much where you're left at in the late game once you get your yoshitsune to around five or six skill ups on his energy skill then you're gonna want to replace uh your helen of troy with yoshitsune because he's just gonna be dealing a ton of physical damage in that back row he's a very very powerful water immortal great to have and again you get him from summons you get him from the market uh you can get him just by going through the mysterium there's tons of ways to get him you also can trade in your alliance credits to get fragments of yoshitsune so very uh easy immortal to obtain over time if you're again you're a free to play uh, player if you're going to be spending a little bit more in the game you can put attila in that front row and you're going to have something along these lines now again for me i have ramses instead of herald that's sort of up for debate i think a lot of players are using Harold instead of Ramses because you don't have to spend money for Harold, right? Um, and also it seems like he has a slight advantage. Um, but you know, either way, whether you go for Ramses or Harold, this is sort of what your end game water is going to look like now. Finally, you can use him in your second, third, fourth March in the back row as just an AOE magical damage immortal, which is going to be really, really nice. So just to give you guys an example, if there's a, if you have a fire March that you're building and you don't want to use uh Himiko or Medvi or whatever, and you don't have Empress Wu, you have Ashoka back here. You don't know who to fill in. You throw in Merlin here in that back row. Um, and then you're looking really, really good. Now, of course, there's no elemental advantage here, obviously. Um, but again, he's just filling in. You have four out of five and you're just dealing that damage again this is your third fourth march this is you're not going all in on this march it's sort of one of your backup marches that you're just using for the arena for example in your third march but just the generic magical damage on merlin is so good now one last thing to know is the position of merlin right my opinion is that your merlin should be behind whichever front row immortal has the highest of the defenses so in this scenario ramses for me has a higher physical and magical defense than attila so i want to protect merlin more than i want to protect my Shitsune. So because of that, I'm putting him behind Ramses. Um, you know, if you have a Harold Brynhild, for example, you're probably going to put uh, Merlin behind your Harold. Now, I think Brynhild probably has higher physical uh, defense, but overall, I think Harold has just higher defense in general. So I would put Merlin behind him. All right. With that being said, guys, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Infinity Kingdom players might see it. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload an Infinity Kingdom video and also comment down below what you think of Merlin do you think he's one of the better immortals here in Infinity Kingdom do you think he ages well or poorly I would love to hear from you guys down below as I said earlier there's a link below to download Infinity Kingdom using my link it's a free to play game I do recommend you guys give it a try it's got beautiful visuals great music it's just it's a relaxing game I love it I know it's a war game but honestly it, it is a very relaxing game for me I play it every day and finally my social media links they're in the description below so make sure you follow me over there on Instagram Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, all that stuff. It's always down below. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.